<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman. Now I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema. Sit down now. Not all the movies I got to uh, check out over the holiday break took place in the theater. A good couple of them took place right on Netflix. And as we know, Netflix's uh, movie selection has not been nearly as strong as its television uh, selection as far as originals go. And, you know, I don't think it's quite had its stride the way things like Amazon have um, as far as from streaming service movies. Um, but they've certainly been getting a lot better, right? Mudbound um, last year, Outlaw King this year. Um, it's starting to get going. And when I saw this one pop up on the feed, I was immediately interested because it's very very similar to a quiet place and i thought that's a really ballsy thing to do in the same year as one of the best horror movies i've seen in the last five years uh took place in in 2018 which is when this movie came out so uh so i should just pull up a chair man and take a seat we're getting ready to dive in spoiler free on bird box um Bird Box comes to us from director uh, Suzanne Beer, who I'm not particularly familiar with. Um, she's been directing for quite some time, but I've literally never seen any of her movies until this one. Um, and, and she does a solid job, I, I think. I think from the directing standpoint, you definitely get solid performances from a, a very large, diverse cast um, that features some very, very heavy-hitting uh, actors. Um Cinematically, it's fine. You know, there, there's nothing that really popped from a visual standpoint in the movie, but but it is it is solid technically. Um, then you have our writer Eric Heiserer, someone I am far more familiar with. Um, you know, as I I've been around for a lot of his movies in the horror realm. Um, you know, when he popped up uh, for the reboot on A Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, I, I thought there were things in that movie that were done very, very well from a writing perspective. Um, jump ahead to, to The Thing, uh, which was the same title of the original movie, but technically a prequel. And I thought that movie did really interesting things as far as what it had to set up so that it was in line with the original movie uh, that comes after. I thought a lot of really good things there. Um, you know, uh, then you get to Arrival, and now you're talking... Oscar caliber writing. Uh, I'm a big fan of Eric Heiserer, and I, I was quite, like I said, intrigued that he would tackle um, a novel that's very, very similar to A Quiet Place. Um, and, and he does a pretty solid job. Look, for me, I think if A Quiet Place doesn't exist, I like this movie a lot more than I did. Um, my problems with this movie stem from the fact that A Quiet Place has already happened. And the choices that uh, Bird Box makes that are different from A Quiet Place, the choices A Quiet Place takes are just far more um, effective. Um, look, this is spoiler free, but you don't really ever get to see whatever it is that these monsters are. Um, this movie is, again, like a worldwide invasion of something. Um, and, and it essentially, it's kind of like a mashup of, of a quiet place meets the happening. Uh, like people just kind of start going crazy, walking into cars, going off buildings, committing suicide. Um, and it's because they're seeing something. And the people in the movie get to see the things, but we really never don't. We get sort to sort of we get to see them. Um, and for me, that kind of killed some of the suspense in the movie. Um, you know, usually uh, when they're getting close, uh, it's fall, so things rise. So a lot of leaves start picking up. Almost feels like a wind effect. Um, and hair rises. So that's how you know when they're close. That and the birds chirp. Um, but we never really get to see them. Um, and I think A Quiet Place is far more effective that we see the aliens early. We get to eventually see them really close up. And every time they are in the proximity of the people, you're on the edge of your seat more because they're physically there. So some of that suspense, not as strong as I think it could have been if we ever actually got to see what the people saw. Um, but that aside, I do think that Heiser does a fairly good job um, of building suspense and drama by developing this really tight-knit group of people and interesting characters. Uh, essentially, as things start to break out, um, I believe in Los Angeles, um, or in and around somewhere in Cali, um, when that starts to happen here, uh, all chaos breaks out and this group of people all end up in a house uh, owned by B.D. Wong, 
um, who I just always love. And he's really always just charismatic, captures your attention whenever he's on screen. Uh, and is really rock solid in this movie. Um, his neighbor, uh, John Malkovich, uh, is the other person that's in the house with his wife at the time. Um, and, uh, you know, they're kind of starting to build out this, like, fortress inside this house. And they are reluctant to let people in, but they ultimately let in a group uh, as Tarante Rhodes uh, pops up grabbing Sandra Bullock's cal- character, Mallory, um, you know, who is our lead. And Sandra Bullock is really excellent in this movie. Um, you know, she does a really good job of being completely devoid of emotion, Um we don't really get any of her backstory, but she has conversations uh, with her s- sister at the beginning of the movie, uh, played by Sarah Paulson. That kind of give you an insight to the fact that, like, she's really not in, like, has clearly had some sort of a bad relationship. And the outcome of that relationship ending left her pregnant by herself. Not really excited about having a kid, just kind of thinks, if I keep just not paying attention, maybe it won't happen type of deal. Um, and, and it's very interesting considering that, a very large portion of this movie takes place with her and two kids that she has to try to get down this river. Um, but the only way that you can leave the house um, to go anywhere is by being blindfolded or not looking. Uh, the minute you go out the house, if you make eye contact or you look out the windows and make eye contact that, with this stuff, you go crazy, commit suicide. Um, so I thought Sandra Bullock was really, really good at just being devoid of all of this emotion throughout the movie. And then slowly you start to see that kind of change in her toward the end with things that happen. Uh, And the approach of the movie, uh, it's a lot of back and forth jumping. Um, You're kind of watching what's currently happening, and then you're jumping back five years to the beginning of what was going on. Um, So I really enjoyed Sandra Bullock's performance. Uh, Trevante Rhodes, as I said, who is the guy who kind of picks her up and helps get her into the house, uh, plays Tom they kind of are are like besties slash, you know, maybe something going on there. Um, but he's really, really good, man. He's, he's, he's strong, he's powerful. Um, but, but he's, he's got a sense about him. That's the kind of polar opposite to Bullock's character. And as you see the two of them interact with the children, um, you kind of get that sense that the two of them make a really good team because they kind of pick each other up uh, in the places that the other isn't great at. Um, you know, Sandra Bullock very focused on survival, whereas Trevante Rhodes is like, they're kids. They should have dreams and, and be able to hope that there's more than just what we have in this house. Um I really dug all their performances. Uh, throw in Jackie Weaver, uh, who's in the house. She's really solid. Uh, Rosa Salazar, also really, really nice. Um, she's in it just for a little bit. As I said, I love B.D. Wong. Um, Lil Rel Howery pops up uh, for some comedic, uh, lighthearted uh, you know, conversation. Kind of cuts some of the tension. He does a pretty good job and has an unbelievably impactful moment. Uh, there's a moment that happens in the movie, and when you know everything you know about uh, his character, Charlie, you're just like, it, it was one of those gut punch moments and really landed well. And I was really surprised. I didn't expect that out of Lil Rel Howery, and I really dug what he had uh, going on in this one. Tom Hollander um, kind of plays like an outsider who gets to the house later than everybody else. Really, really good job. Um, he, he really creates uh, a, a, quite a unique character uh, that's very off-putting um, in certain ways. And the way it all plays out, I really dug how his character was used and what it meant, um, even if I don't necessarily dig the outcome of what uh, you know he produces. But it does. Uh, you know, and it, it, it just All these different characters, that was the thing that really worked. Uh, you're interested in the character, specifically our main character, because we're, we're spending so much time with her and these two kids. You can kind of start to piece together things that will happen in the movie. So the, the, the danger anytime you do that flashing forward and then coming back, um, you, you can kind of give some things away. But despite that, I, like I said, I think Heiser does... Um, I've never read the novel, so I don't know from an adaptation standpoint how well he did. But from a movie standpoint, um, he does a good job of, of d- developing this world, um, you know, uh, and, and setting the scene. He, he paints a great word picture that matches quite well with what's delivered on screen and, and is solid. Um, but Bird Box doesn't quite hit the home run, and I think it's because of the fact that A Quiet Place exists. And just the decisions that John Krasinski made... 
um, just ended up being more effective for a horror movie. Uh, but if you want a really solid like family drama with tension and, and kind of more, um, more of like a thriller, uh, not even thriller, but yeah, just like a, a decently suspenseful family drama. This movie is interesting, and like I said, it's got really solid cast performances, and overall, I liked Bird Box, but I just didn't love it because it is very similar to A Quiet Place and just not as effective as that movie. So, I, I hate to do, right, the comparison thing, but sometimes it's impossible not to, especially when the movies are so similar. Um, but overall, I think Bird Box is solid. I totally think it's worth a watch, especially if you're a horror fan, if you like A Quiet Place. I think you should definitely check out Bird Box. You know, like I said, I really dug what Sandra Bullock does, and as the lead, she carries the movie quite well. Um, even though you don't necessarily like, like, feel a great connection to her because she is so kind of devoid of emotion most of the movie, um, it, it is quite effective by the time you get to the end. And I like where she takes it. So very strong lead performance overall. Pretty solid movie from Bird Box. That's all the Sea Man things, man. Now it's your turn. What do you think about Bird Box? Have you checked it out? Um, you know. Did, did you just completely not like it at all? Uh, did you did you do, did you try to enjoy it? Did you enjoy it? Um, did you think the fact that a quiet place exists, much like I do, hurts this movie? Um, or can you just sit back and completely keep it separate and go, hey, Bird Box is its own thing, and Bird Box does a pretty good job. I would agree with you, but it's definitely very similar. Um, so let me know everything you're thinking down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe and little bell button so you get alerts every time I make a new video. For the C-Mans, cinema sit down. I'm the C-Man. I'm signing off. Peace. Well, well. If you aren't still here, looking for something else to check out that's Seaman related, why well, don't you check out a video like this guy or this guy? And if you really want to help the Seaman out in year two, hit that subscribe button and come join the cinema sit down squad, kids. You know what to do. See ya.